Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy today and for this opportunity to come before you. Father, we ask that you would give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word so that we may be able to fully carry out the, the mysteries of God that you have bestowed upon us, especially now in these end times in which we live. We ask, Father God, that you would help us to overcome all temptations and trials and persecutions. Father God, even in the midst of suffering, we ask that you would give us the zeal that we may be able to proclaim your word. And we ask, Father God, that you would continue to lead and guide us. And we ask that you would give us the blessing, Father God, of being able to proclaim this precious word to the entire world. We thank you so much for all the saints who have gathered. And we ask that you would be with us until the very end. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Again, last time we... Uh, we talked about how God has called us and charged us with these special duties. And these are um, God-given duties, right? And because they are duties bestowed upon us uh, from our Father, we are regarded as servants of Christ. How many believe that? Amen? Amen. Amen. And as, Amen. And as stated, uh, we're going to look at our opening scripture today. Let's do that. Our scripture text comes from one place. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, this is the way any person is to regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. See, so we are servants of Christ, right? We are uh, the stewards of the mysteries of God. And we're going to kind of talk about that today. Also, which is not on my screen, Revelation chapter 14, 4, uh, it talks about the servants of Christ who follow the lamb, right? wherever he goes so we must be able to follow the lamb wherever he goes if he says stop we stop if he says go we go so therefore we have to be mindful who we work for and what we are in god's eyes so as we are approach our uh general assembly which is coming up what next month i believe on the 28th or 29th i can't remember the date but it's coming up and we're going to be uh, called upon to do various duties and, and, and be placed in various roles. So with a heart of thanksgiving, we need to be able to accept the calling of our Father as we take on positions with the church. Amen? And Amen. when we do this, we are fulfilling redemptive history and our roles as God's servants in the end time, especially now in the end time, which is very, very important, right? So although God has called us servants of Christ, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, at the same time, we are blessed stewards of the mysteries of God. And I want to focus on that today. Last week, we talked about, we focused on the, the servants of Christ, but today we're going to focus on the stewards of the mystery of God. And the question today is, what is our role as the stewards of the mysteries of God? Right. I want to kind of explore that today. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go to our next slide here. So the first question is this. Who is the greatest mystery in the Bible? Who's the greatest mystery in the Bible? Jesus Christ. You got you all got 100 percent. Right. Jesus Christ is the greatest mystery in the Bible. And where can we find that? If we look in First uh, Colossians chapter one, verse 27, it says the following. It says, to whom God will to make known what the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles is, the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See that? And then also in the next verse, uh, 1 Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, it says the following. We proclaim him admonishing every person and teaching every person with all wisdom so that we may present every person complete in Christ. Now, what is this talking about? This is talking about evangelism, right? We have been called as stewards of the mystery of God, right? And we're, we're called to manage this precious word that our Father has given us, but we are to proclaim it. So this is talking about evangelism, okay? Whether it's through preaching of the word, uh, song and praise, our worship team, our musicians, our leadership, the president, the, the secretary, 
you know, whatever leadership role or whatever role that you are in, our, our main goal is evangelism and proclamation of this uh, precious word that our Father has given to us. Amen? Amen. So, therefore, our duties are what conferred upon us by the will of God and must be performed to his glory by doing what? By witnessing to all those souls who are lost. Amen? Amen. Also, if we look in um, first, I mean, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9, it says this. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he set forth in him. See? So here, our brother Paul, Apostle Paul is saying, now God has sent me as a steward of the mystery. And what was that to do? What is our role as a steward of the mystery? To witness, to elect souls. God's mystery, which is Jesus Christ. So likewise, this signifies the stewardship which has been entrusted to us today. And this is all in accordance with God's administration, right? This all falls under God's administration. How blessed are you? How blessed are we, right? That God would call someone like us, right? Low down, dirty, two time in, you know, all the names that we call ourselves, right? But God has called us to this place. He has called us and he has bestowed upon us this great mystery. And with that, we have to be able to manage it. We have to be able to share it. We have to be able to proclaim it. Amen. So it all falls under God's administration. So administration, let's look at administration. This word administration, if we look at it, and the Greek word is okonomia, and it means to, it means management or manager, overseer or guardian, right? So as stewards of the mystery, we have to be able to uh, manage and oversee and guard, guard this precious word that God has given to us. Also, it's uh, uh, something that is hidden things that are hidden or secret. Therefore, God has called us and charged us to guard over things that are hidden and secret, right? Stewards of the mysteries of God, right? That means everyone doesn't have this mystery. Everyone has not been given this hidden manna that God has given to us. And with that comes the great responsibility of managing and overseeing uh, redemptive history as we proclaim it to the world. Amen. So the secret Amen. things belong to God. God is saying the secret things belong to, um, to him, but he has revealed those things to us. How awesome is that? If we look in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says this, the secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever so that we may follow all the word of this law. See that? The secret things. Also, if we look in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 to 26, it says, I was made a minister. This is Paul speaking. I was made a minister of this church according to the commission from God. See, he was commissioned from God. It wasn't because of his own merit. It wasn't because of his own works and things like that. But he was commissioned from God. Granted to him, right? for your benefit so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery which had been hidden from the past ages and generations, but now has been revealed to who? His saints. Man, man, that's awesome. Look at that. This mystery that has been, you know, hidden for ages and ages, right? And God has called us and chose us and he has revealed that mystery to us so clearly from the bible the mysteries of god are given to his saints to do what to manage over and guard and again this all falls under god's administration of redemption and secondly and this is very critical god's redemptive history does not happen accidentally in other words god's redemptive history is not by coincidence but it is achieved according to God's administration, which was planned when? Long ago, long ago. 
So how precious are the saints today who are able to see the mysteries of God? So if you look at the world today, I look on the internet, and it's different numbers depending on where you go, but there's roughly what, like 6.5, 7 billion people on planet Earth. It's a lot of people, right? A lot of people. And I believe the grace of God that we have, by the grace of God, that we have been chosen as stewards of the mysteries of God. Out of 7 billion people on planet Earth, God has chosen you, 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 and you, and you, right? Who are we, right? We're no better than the other person. But God and his grace and his mercy has chosen you out of the 7 billion people upon planet Earth to be the stewards of the mystery of God. See, now, when you go out, ordinary people, you know, people see us, they say, hey, well, that's, that's, that's Brother Sam. You know, if they don't know Sam, they say that's Sam. But they don't know that Sam is not ordinary. Sam is not an ordinary brother, right? So... This is how, this is the attitude. We, we must understand that we are not ordinary. We're not ordinary because of, of the merits that we have done or the works that we have done, but because God has chosen us and has given us this, this mystery, right? We're not ordinary. And so the duties that God uh, prefers upon us, we have to understand that the duties are not ordinary as, as well, right? So when we, you know, these duties that we're called to do, we need to accept those duties with a heart of thanksgiving, right? So when the General Assembly comes and, and you give, uh, you were given like two positions, you say, thank you, Lord, <laughs> right? So again, God has chosen us out of 7 billion people to be the, the stewards of the mystery, of this great mystery, right? And it's charged us with managing the hidden and secret, secret things of God, the word of redemptive history, right? So that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So let us look at a, a couple more verses concerning God's administration. Uh, here it says, God's administration is decreed before the ages. Look at a couple more. Isaiah chapter 46, 10, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things which have not been Things uh, which have not been done, saying, my plan be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure, right? Uh, let's look at another one. Ephesians 3, 9, and to enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is, which, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. See, so you can see here that uh, God's administration was decreed before the ages, right? So as, again, as we prepare for our upcoming uh, General Assembly and a call to various uh, positions within the church, let us accept the tasks and duties that are assigned to us and be good stewards in managing and guard over what God has entrusted to us. Amen? So that was our main point number one. Let's go to our main point number two. Our main point number two is this. What are the types of God's administration that we see in the Bible? Paul identified five types of administration of God in the Bible. So we're going to go over those real quick and then we'll wrap up, okay? So the types of God's administration that is found in the Bible. The first one is, is called the administration of God, which is by faith. The administration of God, which is by faith. So the apostle uh, Paul identified and claimed these five types of uh, administration. And the first type is the administration of God, which is by faith. So if we look at 1 Timothy 1, 4, it says the following. It says, nor to pay attention to myths and endless gen genealogies, which give rise to useless speculation rather than advance the plan of God, which is by faith. What is this talking about? Here, Paul is saying in uh, 1 Timothy 1, 4, he's saying there is no place for man's illustration. For man can only teach myths and genealogies and, you know, the, um, the false genealogies. In other words, they cannot manage the entire universe. There can only be God's administration, is what Paul is saying here. And that administration is in faith. 
and it's an administration that cannot be realized or comprehended outside of faith. In other words, only by faith can we understand the mysteries of God. Only by faith can we witness and follow God's administration. So it's, a, it's an administration of faith. We have to have the proper faith. Without the proper faith, we cannot be stewards of the ministry of God. We have to have the proper faith. Amen? And the Amen. second type of uh, God's administration is the stewardship of God's grace. The stewardship of God's grace. And that is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 to 3. And it reads, and it says the following. If indeed you have heard of the administration of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery. So what is Paul is basically saying this. Paul is testifying that God has spoke grace upon him so that he may know God's administration of salvation and that he may participate in the ministry of his plan and that he may be able to manage the duty given to him. See, Paul is saying, hey, I'm able to manage this duty that is given to me by the grace of God. We may, you know, when we um, get called for a particular duty, we may say to ourselves, I can't do this. I can't do this. But if God has called you to do a, a specific duty or to be placed in a certain role, God will equip you to be able to perform that duty or that role that you are in. God will equip you. And this is what Paul is saying, right? And, and in, Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter three, verse eight, um, Paul uh, says to me, the very least of saints, the grace was given to preach to the Gentiles. So even though we may think of ourselves as lowly and not able or capable of uh, performing a, a specific duty, God's grace upon us will enable us to do that particular duty. Amen. So let's Amen. go to our next administration. So our next type of administration is the administration of the mystery. The administration of the, of the mystery. And that is found in um, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 to 9. It says, to me... The very least of all saints, the grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is, which for ages has been in, hidden in God. OK, so here the Apostle Paul highlights the fact that God's administration is a hidden mystery and only God himself can reveal it. In other words, mankind can never know or understand it unless our Father reveals it and opens it up. We as human beings can never know the mysteries of God unless God reveals it to us. All human beings are blind, right? We're all blind spiritually, right? To the will and mysteries of God. But for his chosen people, God opens their eyes and only then can we see the mysteries of God. When God opens our eyes, then we can see the mysteries of God, right? Psalm 119.18 says, open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. See that? God is the one who opens our eyes to all of the mysteries of God. And then when we look at the characteristics of God's administration, the administration of the mystery, we see these different, you know, words here. Colossians 1.26 says, hidden since the past ages and generations. Uh, Ephesians 3, 9, four ages has been hidden. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 7, before the ages, right? So we can see that God's mysteries have been hidden, but have been made uh, revealed to us, his chosen saints in the end time, right? So the fourth type of administration is the administration suitable to the fullness of the times. The administration suitable to the fullness of the times. We can see this in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. It says here, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he set forth in him regarding his plan of the fullness of the times. To do what? To bring all things together in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth, right? So here, 
the word times, we see this word times. The word times here in Greek is kairos, kairos. And this means, a, it signifies a set time, a set time or an opportune time uh, when a special event takes place and a certain goal is achieved with, uh, within God's redemptive history. And this is also stating the fact that the administration of God, which has been hidden in mystery, would not be revealed unless that decisive time has been reached within God's redemptive history. That's a mouthful, right? So the mystery of God is Jesus Christ. We've already established it, right? The mystery of God is Jesus Christ. And the administration suitable to the fullness of the times has been achieved when? Has already been achieved in the first coming of Jesus Christ and will be completed in the second coming of Jesus Christ, right? And we can see that in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, it says this. Now, after John was taken into custody, Jesus came to in, uh, into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. See? So, again, the fullness of time. Jesus came according to the fullness of the time. And also, if we look back up in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 10, in the, in the latter half, it expresses this as the summing up of all things in Jesus Christ. This means that at the second coming of Jesus Christ, the consummation of the administration suitable to the fullness of times will be fulfilled and God will restore all creation in the universe. And finally, and finally, we're going to wrap it up after this. The fifth type of God's administration is the stewardship from God bestowed upon me. The stewardship from God bestowed upon me. And this is found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. It says, I was made a minister. Again, Paul is speaking here. I was made a minister of this church according to the commission from God granted to me for your benefit so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. Amen. So here the apostle Paul confesses that stewardship that was given to him by God was for the purpose of fulfilling the word of God through him. And secondly, Paul understands that he was able to become a minister of the church, not by his own will, but according to the word of God. Amen. So those are the five different types of administration that we see in the Bible. Right. And it's my hope and prayer that as stewards of the mysteries of God, we're able to fulfill all that God has planned for us. And I believe that you and all of us, we will we are called to a particular purpose. In time, it's not by coincidence, it's not by accident, but God has called us to this time to fulfill his plan of redemptive history. So in conclusion, in conclusion, the zeal of stewards of the mysteries of, the mysteries of God, we as, as the stewards of God, we have to have this zeal of performing our duties, even in the time of suffering and pain. And because Paul had understood the stewardship that was uh, given to him by God, he was able to rejoice even during in times of pain and, and great suffering for the saints that he ministered to and to fill up in his body the, the remaining afflictions of Christ for the church, right? So let's look at a couple of verses and we'll wrap it up. Colossians chapter uh, 1, verses 24 to 25 says this, Now rejoice, I rejoice in my sufferings, for your sake, and in my flesh, I am supplementing what is lacking in Christ's affliction in behalf of his body, which is the church. Verse 25, I was made a minister of this church according to the commission from God granted to me for your benefit so that I might fully, see that? So that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. Paul gave everything that he had with all his energy to fully carry out his duty, right? In preaching and proclaiming the word of redemptive history. And Paul said that, that I might fully carry out, fully, not halfway, but fully. So likewise, I pray today uh, that our father will bestow upon this, this zeal that he 
bestowed upon Paul, the zeal of performing our duties, even in the time of great suffering and persecution. We have to be able to do this, right? Colossians 1.29 says this, for the purpose I also labor, striving according to his power, which works mightily with me, within me. So again, I pray that as we come upon our general assembly, let us think about, let us pray, and then let us be able to, um, with a thankful heart, be able to accept the calling that God has placed us in, the roles, the positions, whatever that it may be, like Paul, let us have this zeal of performing our duties within the church. Amen? So Amen. I'm going to stop right here. And next week, what we'll do is we'll just do a, a wrap up. We'll just do a summary. It'll be quick. And we'll finish uh, this theme for the month, okay? And I appreciate you guys having patience with all the techni technical difficulties and everything. I love you guys, man. I love the saints. So with that, I hope that you were blessed. And again, like I said, next week, what we'll do is wrap up and then we'll close out this theme for the month of August. Amen. So with that, let's pray and then close out the Lord's Prayer, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for teaching us today, Father God, uh, about the mysteries that you have revealed to us. Father, we ask that this great word that you have given us, the calling that you have bestowed upon us, let us not take for granted this special mission that you have given to us, but let us with a thankful heart be able to accept the mission that you have given us and that we may complete that mission, that task, and that we may be able to proclaim to a lost world, Father God, the word of life, the word of redemptive history. I pray that you will bless each and every saint of Shiloh International Missions. Father, I pray that you will continue to lead and guide us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be able to be true stewards of the mystery and that we may be able to proclaim this precious word to the ends of the earth. We thank you so much and we give you all the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.